Howdy folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the Canyon Spectral On. Now the Spectral On is Canyon's do most of the things e-mountain bike. It slots in between the Neuron On, which is the 130mm travel trail bike, and the Torque On, which is the 175mm travel park bike. The Spectral On splits the difference in terms of both wheel size and suspension travel. This bike has 150mm travel front and rear, and it's built with a mullet wheel setup. So we have a 29 inch front wheel and a 27.5 inch rear wheel. That allows Canyon to build the Spectral on with a very short rear end. The rear center length on this bike is just 435 millimeters. New for this year's bike is the move to the Shimano EP8 motor. And we also have a larger 630 watt hour battery inside the down tube. It's all built around a carbon mainframe with an alloy rear, and it's certainly a sleek looking bike with plenty of neat integration. There's an internal steering limiter which prevents the fork crown from smashing into the down tube. There's an internal wedge for clamping the seat post. And down at the rear axle, we have the really neat tool-free Quixel through axle. There's also a generous skid plate to protect the motor and help integrate it nice and cleanly into this frame. And also nice to see is the fact that the Spectral On will fit a water bottle inside the mainframe. For 2021, there are six models in the Canyon Spectral On lineup. All of those models are built around the same frame, motor, and battery. The entry point into the range is the Spectral On CF6, and that has a list price of 8,599 Australian dollars. At the other end of the range is the top end Spectral On CF9, which has a price of 13,549 Australian dollars. The bike we have here is one step down from that. This is the Spectral On CF8, and the sticker price on this is 10,899 Australian dollars. For your money, you're getting performance series Fox suspension with a 36 fork and a float DPX2 shock. We've got a Shimano XT 1x12 drivetrain, four piston brakes with 203 mil rotors, and a Maxxis Minion tire combo with a 2.5 inch DHF on the front and a 2.6 inch DHR2 on the rear. Confirmed weight for our test bike here is 22.4 kilos, and that's weighed without pedals and with the tires set up tubeless. Now with Canyon bikes being sold direct to consumer, our test bike was air freighted straight out of Germany. It's worth noting here that you do have to pay an extra shipping cost of 199 Australian dollars. Canyon will also charge you 30 bucks for the cardboard bike box. That means the total price of this bike here is actually $11,128, including shipping and the bike box. Also worth pointing out is that in Australia, the battery on this bike is actually sent separately via road freight. The idea is that the bike and the battery arrive at the same time and all you need to do is install the protective plate onto the battery before clipping it into the down tube and charging it up. Otherwise the bike is pretty straightforward to build. You will need to install the front wheel, the handlebar, the seat post and the saddle and you'll also need to plug in the DI2 wire for the display unit. The only bummer is that this bike isn't supplied with tubeless valves or sealant so you'll have to BYO which seems a bit ridiculous on a bike costing 11 grand. Now at 175 centimeters tall, I've been riding a medium size in the Spectral On, and the bike has fitted me well, even with the 150 mil dropper post, there's a little bit of room to spare there, which is more than I can say for some previous canyons I've tested in the past. It's worth noting that if you do go up to the large frame size, however, the seat tube gets longer by a whopping 40 millimeters, even though the reach only increases by 20 millimeters. Now this is an important note for riders who are between 175 to 180 centimeters tall, who might be tossing up between the medium or large size. It's definitely worth looking at Canyon's recommended minimum and maximum saddle heights for each frame size in the geometry chart. That being said, I've not had any issues with fit on this bike, and indeed the 445 millimeter reach measurement is right in the ballpark. It does feel quite a bit longer than that though, and there are two reasons for this. The first is the slack seat tube angle, which Canyon lists at 74.5 degrees. However, once I'd slammed the saddle all the way forward on the rails, it actually measured up closer to 76 degrees, 
though it's still not quite as steep as some of the more contemporary designs on the market. The other reason is the one-piece carbon fibre handlebar and stem. Now according to Canyon, the one-piece design is lighter and stronger than a traditional bar and stem, and it certainly looks slick with the internal wiring and that integrated display. The bars are 780 millimetres wide, and Canyon says the virtual stem length is 50 millimetres. It actually feels longer on the trail though, and indeed the grips do sit further forward than the steerer tube, almost as if the bars have been rolled forward. And that means the effective stem length is probably closer to 60 mil, giving a longer reach overall. Now I actually quite like this because it brought my chest forward and encouraged me to properly weight the front wheel. Suspension setup on this bike is also relatively straightforward. I ran the Fox 36 with the recommended pressure and rebound settings, and out of the box it is very comfortable with excellent small bump sensitivity. That said, the grip version of the 36 can be a little bit divey, so I did end up adding a third volume space inside the air spring, just to give it a little bit more mid-stroke support and keep it riding higher in its travel. I set up the shock with 30% sag, though I did need to run rebound damping on the faster side, just a couple of clicks off the faster setting, otherwise the back end would feel a little bit too boggy. Once dialed in though, the suspension on this bike is absolutely fantastic. The active four bar suspension design keeps things nice and neutral with minimal feedback through the pedals. There is less anti-squat here compared to the regular Spectral models, and Canyon also hasn't tuned the rear shock quite as aggressively with a smaller volume spacer inside the rear shock. And that gives it a more linear and active feel, which is noticeable when you're seated and pedaling through choppy terrain, but also deeper into the travel, say when the rear wheel is copping repeat impacts at speed. The floaty suspension feel is complemented nicely by the supple Maxxis tyres. Canyon has a lightweight XO casing on the front and an XO Plus casing on the rear. Set at 21 and 25 psi respectively, they provide a nicely damped feel on the trail and plenty of reliable traction on the dry and loose rocky conditions that we mostly tested this bike on. For an e-bike, these are quite lightweight tyres though. They both weigh in under a kilo each, and indeed I managed to pinch flat the rear tyre on several occasions. To be fair, I really should have fitted a tyre insert into the rear wheel, though for riders who are particularly hard on their gear, you might want to consider upgrading the tyres to something with tougher casings right off the bat. Throughout testing, we've been super impressed with this bike's handling and the way that it rides lighter than it is. For less experienced riders, it's quite intuitive and easy to ride, with a really nimble and sporty feel on the trail. The mullet setup and those short chain stays allow you to really steer off the rear wheel, and the low hanging bottom bracket keeps your center of gravity nice and low to the ground. The front end steering is quite light too, and you don't need to push that hard on the inside grip for the whole bike to lean over and initiate a turn. It's very flickable, and for more experienced riders, it really encourages quite a hard and sharp cornering style. It also loves getting both wheels off the ground, and while the suspension is active, there's still enough support there for your feet and hands to push off of. Along with the stout chassis and that tight back end, this bike loves jumping and playing with the terrain. Those same attributes can make it feel a little bit pingy on steeper and rougher enduro style trails, and it's not as planted at really high speeds compared to slacker and burlier bikes like the Specialized Levo and the Merida E160. Not helping things, on steeper descending trails, my ass would occasionally contact the tail of the saddle, which had me second guessing whether I'd actually compress the dropper post all the way. That e-bike specific saddle is great on the climbs though, it provides you with a load of support and it helps to lock your sit bones in to give you a really comfortable and supportive climbing position. Overall climbing performance is good thanks to that perky EP8 motor, though when things get really steep and technical, that short rear end makes it harder to get your weight over the front of the bike, with the front wheel tending to lift and wander compared to bikes that have longer back ends. It's a different experience on smoother purpose-built climbing trails though, where the Spectral On makes short work of tight switchbacks, and the relatively lightweight tires keep it rolling along with plenty of enthusiasm. As for the overall package, we've been really impressed with the Spectral On CF8 test bike, thanks to its excellent suspension, powerful brakes, and positive shifting. I did clip the rear derailleur a few times, but it's managed to shrug off those impacts without drama. And I did get to experience the brilliance of the SRAM Universal Derailleur Hanger, which is designed to actually rotate backwards in the dropout to help get the derailleur out of the way in the event of an impact. While I did manage to pinch flat the rear tire on several occasions, the DT Swiss wheels haven't flinched at all. 
These are an e-mountain bike specific wheel set, so they're quite heavy at 2,203 grams, but with heavier duty rims, spokes, hub shells, and hub internals, they've proved to be super tough all throughout testing. And that, my friends, brings us to the verdict of the Canyon Spectral On. Well, this is a great looking e-mountain bike with a high level of integration around the Shimano motor and battery. It isn't the slackest or burliest bike around, and indeed, if you prefer riding really steep and really rough terrain, chances are you'll be better served by the longer travel torque on. In comparison, the Spectral On is less of a plowmobile and more of a speedy technical trail bike. It offers incredible agility and loads of pep through twisty flow trails, where that short back end and low bottom bracket allow you to rip through corners with speed and precision. Indeed, this is the most agile e-mountain bike we've ever tested. It's loads of fun and really engaging to ride, and it rarely failed to put a massive grin on our faces whenever we rode it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about our experience of testing the Canyon Spectral on, the full review is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. Hit the link in the video description below, and that will take you through to the full review of this bike here. If you've got any questions for us about the Spectral On, drop those into the comments below. Give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that right now because we have plenty more videos coming your way soon. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!